There are individuals in the United States who seek to carry out acts of terrorism and violence against our communities and our country. Hello. Listen, I don't know if this is anything, but what I just saw looked really suspicious. Definitely out of the ordinary. When growing up in New York City, my grandfather always taught me a simple lesson. Be aware of your surroundings. His concept was that by simply paying attention to what's happening around you, a little suspect, you could discern when something was wrong and there was maybe a threat or simply just a whack job cab driver barreling down too close to the sidewalk. It was an excellent suggestion I brought forth into my adult life and maybe... More people need to accept the concept of the new war being waged on this country and its citizens to be aware and say something. Welcome to Midpoint. Retired U.S. Army Special Forces Master Sergeant, active duty 25 years, a decorated combat veteran, author of the book The Green Beret Guide to Terrorism Awareness and Personal Security, Master Sergeant Brian Morris joins us. Brian, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Ed, for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Let's get into it right now. What I just said, it was an awareness know what's around you right now it's so simple to say brian but why can't we get to that point or what is it that stops people more important from seeing something and wanting then to here we go get involved you know ed it's it's something that i talk about repeatedly in my book i call it situational awareness and it's nothing more than mitigating risk by knowing the threats staying alert being aware of your surroundings and arming yourself with the knowledge to combat those threats but it, it's a simple thing we're getting down though and i i can hear you and it's really simple but i guarantee you there's people right now that will say wait a minute aren't you trying to make people a little bit paranoid here because you're going to have people sitting with their head on a swivel 24 7. look when something looks wrong listen to that inner voice inside you don't be afraid to act a lot of people feel like it, they're going to offend somebody if they tell somebody that something's wrong call the authorities if it looks wrong say something if it turns out that, that it was nothing, it's nothing. But you could have mitigated a catastrophe. How do you then get past that? And I'm going to go back to that line again. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to put myself or my family in danger by perhaps saying something if I see something. Look, here's the bottom line. Islamic extremism is at war with us. And we need to recognize that. We need to stop trying not to offend people. And we need to put our security first. So you talked about having your head on a swivel. We need to have our heads on a swivel because it's just a matter of time before we get hit again in our own country. Let me ask you about specifically the way we live, because I've been reading a lot of different terror experts here in the last few months, actually. And there's actually one I found that said, wait a minute, attacks are undeniable, but it should not alter the way we live our lives. Brian, let's talk about that right now, because there's people saying that I don't want to change my life, and we keep, we keep hearing from the government, don't worry about it, you want it to change your life. Isn't that just naive thinking in any sense of the imagination? 21st century, we have, whether we want to or not, we are going to change the way that we live. Look, we're going to have to change. That's the bottom line. Something like 2,000 people tried to board planes in 2014 with weapons. Uh, Al-Qaeda magazine is now putting out directions on how to get a bomb on an airplane. It's just a matter of time before we get hit on our own soil again. And we really need to take that seriously. If we don't take that threat seriously, I promise you, the people that want to do us harm are taking it seriously. All right, now i got about a minute left before we take a break. Come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about that situational awareness. But as somebody who has spent time in the military, spent time looking at this issue, is there any doubt in your mind that as we sit here right now today, and again, I'm not trying to, to throw caution to the wind here and panic people, but reality of the situation, that there are people in our neighborhoods, sleeper cells sitting here, and they are simply waiting for the go. Look, there's terrorist training camps all over the world. It's not a secret. They, were they, I think it was like 20 camps within the U.S. have been identified. It's ridiculous. Not, and there, these people are being protected by our own laws in this country. We need to put the political correctness to the side, and we need to, to eradicate the situation. Is this government kidding ourselves and also kidding themselves when they tell us that they feel we are completely safe here at home? Look, I, I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for the government or sure. the military or anybody else. But I have to say that I don't believe the current administration is taking this threat seriously. And, and it's, it's really not a good thing for the United States of America. It's something that we need to take seriously. It doesn't mean that we have to panic. It just means that we have to take it seriously and we need to act when things are wrong.
Okay, stand by a couple of minutes here because now we're going to get to the next part. Breaking back with Master Sergeant Brian Morris, let's dig into putting together the ideas of situational awareness and public deterrent. And at 51 after the hour, welcome back. Our first trip to the new year, we're heading for Outland when Midpoint can... Welcome back to Midpoint. Green Beret Special Forces veteran, owner and CEO of the security consulting firm SF24 Solutions, author of the Green Beret Guide to Terrorism Awareness and Personal Security, Master Sergeant Brian Morris. Brian, all right, let's get down to it. We've told people now that they have to be more aware of what goes on around them. We're talking to mostly people who don't have a lot of security training. Most people don't even own a weapon. Most people are just thinking, all right, seriously, what do I do? Give me a couple of tips here and the things that people absolutely have to do if they want to be more aware without being paranoid. The first thing you want to do Ed, is understand how terrorists operate. The first thing they're going to like to target, they're, they're going to be looking for soft targets. So anything that, that doesn't have a lot of security, you know, you're, we're talking about infrastructure, commerce, be synagogues or churches. Those are the type of things, you know, uh, uh, overpasses, uh, bridges, Anything that can create a lot of damage and doesn't have a lot of security on a 24-7 basis, they're going to pull surveillance on that. So what you're looking for are people that are constantly, that, that aren't normally there but are, are taking pictures or filming, things that don't seem like they would normally be filmed. And maybe there's not somebody in the background, they're filming a bridge or a, a, an overpass or something to that, to that extent or even a building. They're going to rehearse. They... They may do things like dry runs where they, they actually call the police and try and find out what the uh, reaction time is of the police. And then they're going to go ahead and they're going to do their actions on the objective. They're actually going to go ahead and hit their target. And at that time, you know, it, you may not, you may be in a situation where you, you don't know until it's already happening. And then the only thing that you can do is to try and get away and help others to get away. So you want to help to, to, to evacuate the area, get people away, and do exactly what the, the police and those first responders are telling you to do. Well, when you talk about soft targets, O'Brien, the way you're talking here, it sounds as if it is inevitable that here in the United States, whether we want to admit it or not, that when we go to the grocery store, when we go to the department store, when we go to the movie theater, when we go to the gym, that we're going to eventually have armed guards everywhere. That's the way it sounds. Well, you know, a lot of countries in the world are doing that. And it's, it's something that it's just the reality of the times that we live in. Listen, there's 1.5 billion Muslims in the world. I've fought side by side with Muslims. I have nothing against the Muslim religion. I think that they're great people. But there's a handful of people. There is a segment of the Muslim population that is radicalized, and they are at war with us. And we have to take that threat seriously and respond to it. If we don't, we're going to find ourselves with our hands in our pocket. And something really bad is going to happen in this country. It's not going to be good for the American people. And we're going to have to learn our lesson the hard way. And I don't want to see that happen. And the way that we can stop that is by having that situational awareness that your grandfather used to tell you about in New York City and just being aware of your surroundings and arming yourself with the knowledge to, to combat these situations that you may find yourself in and knowing what to do when something bad happens. I got about a minute left here. Do you think it's something of a joke when the president's administration, when the spokespeople say that they don't want to use the word radical Islam, put those words together because it's an inaccurate description? It's ridiculous. It's an absolutely accurate description. You know, you can call it semantics. You can call it Islamic extremism. You can call it Islamic terrorism, Islamic fundamentalism. The bottom line is these people are from the Islamic faith, but they have been extremists. They, they are extremists. They've been radicalized. They have, they have ide ideals and ideologies that are different from the Islamic religion, but that's where they come from, and we need to, uh, to identify that. But saying on the other side of it as well, as you just said, you fought with people who follow the Muslim faith. Not everybody wants to kill unbelievers, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the Muslim people are good people. I have nothing against them. I had fought side by side with them. I've had my life in their hands many times over the years, and, and I have absolutely nothing against them. We are at a tough point in our society right now where we have to take action, but we have to then know when to take action, how not to overreact. And that, of course, is a conversation for another day that I think we need to have, which we will. Let's remind everybody of the book here. The book, once again, is The Green Beret Guide to Terrorism, Awareness, and Personal Security. The author, Master Sergeant Brian Morris. Master Sergeant, Good. Brian, Good. either way, thank you so much for joining us today, my friend. All right. Green Beret Pocket Guide. <laughs> Green you. Beret Pocket Guide. There you go. We'll get that in there, too. Thanks a lot, Brian. All right.
All right, on our return, let us sally forth to the magical place called Outland, because people still reside there.